So now that we've done some basics about what inequalities mean, we're going to solve some inequalities now. And you'll notice this looks an awful lot like a two-step equation that you know and love, you've done a thousand times. And our goal, just like when we're solving an equation, is to figure out what possible values this x could have in order to make this inequality true. The good news for you guys is that to solve an inequality, you do exactly like you would if it were an equation. So pretend for a second that this greater than symbol is actually an equal sign. Well, you know what to do. First, you're going to get rid of that 3 by adding a positive 3. Just like an equation, if you add 3 to one side, you've got to add 3 to the other. 11 plus 3 is 14. You're going to bring down that 2x. In order to cancel out that 2, because it's multiplication, you are going to divide by 2. That's going to leave you with an x. Divide this side by 2, and you've got a 7. Now, here is where you could go wrong. And again, it, what, are you, what are you guys getting ready to do? I, well, you guys aren't getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to do something wrong. Because a lot of kids will say x is equal to 7. Okay, and that is not correct. And let's see why. I'm going to rewrite the inequality down here. So 2x minus 3 is greater than 11. Okay, if I put in 7 for x, I'm going to do that over here. So instead of 2 times x, I'm going to do 2 times 7 minus 3. So 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 3 is 11. 11 is not greater than 11. So that means I did something wrong. And the reason for that is because x can't actually be equal to 7 in order for this inequality to work. I've got to bring this inequality symbol down. x, in fact, is going to be any number that is greater than 7. So now let's prove it and make sure we did it right. So I'm going to just pick a number. Instead of doing 2 times x, I'm going to pick a number that's greater than 7. Of course, 8 is an easy one to pick. So 2 times 8 minus 3. So 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 3 is 13. Now it works. 13 is greater than 11. So that's the mistake that a lot of kids make. If it's an inequality, sometimes they put an equal sign in there for their answer, and you've got to make sure you carry that same inequality symbol down Otherwise, it's not correct, because as we just showed, x wasn't equal to 7. If you put 7 into that inequality, you won't get a number that's bigger than 11. You'll get a number that's equal to 11. But if you take a number that's bigger than 7, in our case, I just used an 8 to check, then we will get a number that is bigger than 11. So be very careful and make sure that you don't make that mistake. So I'm going to work another one for you here. And again, we've got 5x minus 6 is less than 24. Again, you're going to solve it exactly like you would an equation. I'm going to get rid of this minus 6 with a plus 6. I'm going to add a 6 to this side. 24 plus 6 is 30. I'm going to bring down my 5x. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So I've got an x and a 6. And remember, I cannot put an equal sign in there because the equal sign will not be correct. 6 is not actually a possible answer. Instead, I'm going to drag that inequality down. x is any number that is less than 6. Now I've got something just a little bit different, but you're still going to solve it the same way. Now this time you'll notice that I included it's less than or equal to this time, which is going to change the way that we would check our answer, but it's not going to change the way we would solve it. So of course we've got x divided by 2 minus 4. We're going to get rid of that minus 4 first. 2 plus 4 is 6. I'm going to bring down my x divided by 2. To cancel out that division, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I've got x and I've got a 12. I'm still going to bring down that same inequality symbol that I have down here. So any possible answer part of the solution set could be any number that is less than 12. And But this time, 
x could be equal to 12 also. And if I put it back into my inequality, I will see that that is actually the case. Because, so instead of a x divided by 2, I'm going to do a 12 divided by 2. So 12 divided by 2, I'm going to write it kind of over here in the corner, is 6. 6 minus 4 is, in fact, less than or equal to 2. Because 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 is equal to 2. So when you've got the equal to symbol in there, you can actually substitute that exact number back in for x. So the gist of this, guys, is that you can solve any inequality the same way that you solve an equation. You just really need to be careful and make sure that your final answer includes the exact inequality symbol that was in the original problem. And if you go back to check your answer, which you should do, you need to make sure that you're noticing whether or not equal to is a possibility. I'm going to give you one now. I want you to pause the video. And I want you to check yourself when you're done. Oh, there I go. I turned that into an equal. I meant to turn it into a, there we go. Pause the video, try to work this yourself, then restart the video and check yourself when you're ready. I'm going to assume you've done that. So I'm going to start by getting rid of that five on both sides. Bring down my three X, divide both sides by three. So X isn't equal to 10, but it is greater than 10 because I brought that symbol down. That means I can put in any number that's bigger than 10 back in for X and my inequality will work. I want you guys to try one more on your own. Please, please, please pause the video and check yourself and make sure that you did it correctly. So I just gave my I just gave you a one step this time. X divided by three. Of course, to cancel out the divided by three, you need to multiply by three. Both sides. That means that any possible solution is anything that is less than or equal to 36.